The HDR is one of the most popular sniper rifles in Modern Warfare. It packs the best range of any sniper, as well as sky high damage that makes it all but a guaranteed one shot kill to the chest and up. If you're a sniper already, chances are you're already aware of the challenge that getting this gun gold is. If you're new to sniping or chasing gold on the road to Damascus, then you might be totally unfamiliar with this weapon. This video is designed to help all of you, as I'm going to be covering my top tips and tricks for getting the HDR gold in the fastest and easiest way possible. I'll be covering my ideal class setup, the best game modes to play, playstyle advice, as well as guidance for the most difficult of the camo challenges. Timestamps are in the description for each section. One of the only bad things about the HDR is that its attachments don't offer a lot of choice for customization compared to the AX50. For instance, there's little you can do to boost the aim down sight time or raise mobility by any significance. Attachments Monolithic suppressor, 26.9 inch HDR Pro barrel, TAC laser, FTAC stalker scout stock, recon, secondary. Anything that's good for close range, such as akimbo snake shots or Renettis, just use whatever you fancy. Perks Cold blooded, ghost, amped. Equipment, stim, and any lethal. This class is geared towards mobile sniping. It boosts the mobility as much as possible, but also preserves and exploits the range this gun offers you. You can take on enemies at both medium and long range with this build, provided you're both accurate and tactical. As you may have guessed from this class build, this gun is at its best in ground war. The huge maps here will really let you get the most out of the HDR's incredible range, while the increased number of players will offer the potential for the high kills you need to progress camos quickly. The HDR is more cumbersome, slow moving than the other snipers, so playing on smaller maps puts you at a real disadvantage. If you're caught out at close range with this sniper, chances are it won't end well. Ground war reduces the likelihood of this happening, as there's much more space and cover for you to utilise. It increases your long range advantage whilst decreasing the likelihood you'll be constantly pushed by aggressive SMG and assault rifle players. The HDR offers you range that can cover entire maps with ease, but that doesn't mean you should be entirely dependent on distant kills. Sitting in a corner or at the back of the map waiting for the odd long shot kill is not going to allow you to progress through the camos quickly. Instead, you want to take a tactical approach, flank objectives and get behind enemies in order to maximise your kills. This gun is effective at any range if you're accurate, but you'll most likely get sprayed down if you happen across a player at close range. My advice is to cover busy areas, don't wander directly into the fray, but cover combat and shoot into it. You can engage any player you see, so you want to maximise the amount of players that you can possibly kill. Stick to cover as you're exposed when you're trying to take accurate shots. Also, using the tactical insurgent can give you multiple respawns in advantageous positions. Make sure to place yourself in the best position possible, as often as possible. If you're not where enemies expect you to be, you can really rack up kills with ease. Get a few kills and move on, as staying stationary for too long will see you get pushed by unhappy players. Now some camo challenges are more difficult than others. On screen now are the typically easy camo challenges that don't require a lot of thought. These will happen naturally over the course of you using and levelling up the HDR. There's little you can do to accelerate your progression with these besides consciously going for them. Because of this, I won't be covering them in any great detail. However, there are also challenges that can pose a real problem to anyone chasing gold. These on-screen challenges are all problematic and can be tedious if you don't know the best way to go about doing them. I'm going to be covering each of these in greater detail in order to give you the best tips and tricks that will help you to complete them fast. First up is Topo, which requires 50 long shots. This can be a real pain if you aren't familiar with the best attachments or the accuracy demands of long shots. You can make this much easier for yourself by adding on a higher zoom scope such as a thermal or variable zoom, as well as a bipod in order to reduce weapon sway. Now the HDR has very little bullet drop, which makes picking off players at range much easier than with the other snipers, which is nice. but. You still want to be aiming for upper chest slash headshots, as having to double tap an enemy at distant range is much harder to do. My advice is to figure out where there are long lines of sight on each map, and place yourself in the best covered position that will allow you to pick off enemies easily. You're going to need a clear view of the area, and also don't want to be too exposed yourself. The most important thing with this challenge is to be patient, as it can take time to rack up the 50 kills required. This is one of the only times when playing more defensively is definitely in your best interest. Tiger is next. This needs 50 mount kills. 
This is by far and away the most dreaded of the challenges associated with sniper rifles, and for good reason. There's no point trying to get aggressive when chasing this challenge, as mounting up under gunfire just isn't possible. Instead, focus on sticking to the edges of the map at all times. Watch objectives in order to pick off as many players as possible. High vantage points are best for this as you'll be able to scope out a wider area. Make a conscious effort to mount kill enemies, even if you don't need to mount to kill them. You should also aim for upper body shots more than ever, as nothing is more frustrating than hit markering on a mount kill. Try and figure out a position that doesn't leave you too exposed and make sure you're out of common lines of sight on the map. You're highly vulnerable when mounted, so if an enemy player predicts your movement, you're never going to have a chance. This challenge is definitely a test of patience, so start working on it as soon as possible. If there's a small map playlist like 24 hour shipment, then stick on a low level zoom optic and hop into that. Be patient and persevere. It's a grind, but it's necessary. Reptile sees you needing 75 kills without attachments. Problem with this one is that you lose the stealth that a suppressor offers you, so picking up multiple kills per life is much more problematic. With this in mind, playing tactically loses a lot of its effectiveness. There's not a lot of point going for wide flanks and moving behind enemy lines, as as soon as you shoot they're going to know where you are. I'm not saying charge in head first, but play more aggressively than usual. Don't worry about going on long kill streaks, as it's more than likely not going to happen. Focus on picking up kills each life and repeating this. You still need to make the most of cover and tactical play, but your exposing gun defeats a lot of the point. You do still have incredible range to work with though, so you can effectively challenge everyone on the map still. Make sure your shots count. As soon as you let one off, everyone is going to know where you are. Finally, we have skulls, requiring 25 3 kill streaks. This requires a balance of tactics and aggression. Don't spend every game chasing a single kill streak, as that's just tedious. Put yourself in a position where you can actively get kills, but be more cautious than normal. Avoid exposed areas and watch for long lines of sight. Being picked up by a cross map thermal sniper is beyond annoying when going for this challenge. Also, avoid wandering too close to objectives where SMG and assault rifle players can rush you. You need to be more defensive than normal, simply to pick up the consistent kills you need. I'd recommend running EOD as well, to prevent avoidable explosive deaths. Running support streaks such as the UAV can also give you a helping hand. Make an effort to stay more out of the way than usual, and don't go for risky fights or shots that will only delay your progress. Provided you're calculated and tactical, this should happen quickly. The HDR is a great gun in the right hands. Its slow mobility comes with a trade-off of incredible range. Using it is a moderate learning curve, but one that's manageable if you're patient. The biggest factor with this gun is accuracy but the high damage is forgiving enough that more often than not, it will be a one-shot kill if you hit your target anywhere. Getting it gold is generally good fun and rewarding. I hope this video has given you the advice to blast through the more difficult of the challenges in your way. Most are easy, but a select few ones require some thinking about and a helping of patience to complete.